Ever wonder why a mother bird risks her life to protect her chicks? Or why humans, despite our capacity for reason, often act selfishly? Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene offers a radical answer. We're all, from bacteria to elephants, survival machines for our genes. Published in 1976, this book didn't just explain biology, it shifted our understanding of life itself. It transformed our view of evolution by suggesting that the gene, not the individual or species, is the primary unit of selection. Dawkins argues that genes are inherently selfish, seeking their own survival above all else. Richard Dawkins presents the idea that genes are the fundamental units of evolution, acting as the primary replicators. Their ultimate goal is immortality, achieved by transferring themselves from one generation to the next. Organisms, in this perspective, are survival machines, vehicles created and shaped by genes to enhance their own chances of replication. In this view, we humans, along with all other living organisms, are temporary carriers of our genes existing to ensure their survival. Dawkins uses compelling examples, such as the evolution of eyes, to illustrate his point. He explains that genes responsible for better vision are more or likely to persist and proliferate, as organisms with superior sight have a greater chance of surviving and reproducing. This perspective shifts the focus of evolution from the individual or species to the gene itself, offering a revolutionary way to understand the process of natural selection. Selfish doesn't imply malice or consciousness, but rather that genes behave in ways that maximize their own chances of being copied. This can manifest as seemingly selfish behavior in organisms. For example, parents care for their young not out of pure parental love, but because doing so increases the survival chances of their genes shared with their offspring. This leads into the concept of kin selection. What does it mean for genes to be selfish? Dawkins clarifies that genes behave in ways that ensure their replication. This leads to behaviors in organisms that might seem selfish, but are actually strategies for gene survival. A classic example he gives is parental care, where parents invest in their offspring because they share genes with them. Dawkins explains how apparent altruism, such as a bee sacrificing itself for the hive, can be understood through the selfish gene theory. Genes that promote behaviors benefiting genetic relatives, even at a cost to the individual, enhance the overall survival of those shared genes. This phenomenon is known as inclusive fitness. Inclusive fitness? Inclusive fitness refers to the total genetic contribution of an individual to the next generation. It accounts for both direct fitness, the individual's own reproductive success. Indirect fitness, the reproductive success of genetic relatives facilitated by the individual's actions. A gene-promoting behavior that helps close relatives who share a portion of the same genes survive and reproduce can increase its own prevalence in the population, even if the behavior decreases the individual's direct survival or reproduction. Imagine you're part of a big family, and you all share some of the same treasures. Now let's say one day your little sister drops her toy in the river, and she can't swim to get it back. You decide to jump in to save it, even though it's risky for you. Why would you do that? Because helping her means the family keeps its treasures safe, and some of those treasures are the same ones you have. Now in nature, Animals don't think about toys or rivers, but they do care about something very special, their genes. Genes are like tiny instructions inside every living thing that tell them how to grow and live. Families share a lot of the same genes, so helping a family member survive is like helping part of yourself survive too, even if it means taking a little risk. This is what scientists call kin selection. It's when animals are more likely to help their relatives because they share the same genetic treasures. For example, a meerkat standing guard to protect its family from danger might not have babies of its own, but it helps its brothers and sisters who carry the same important instructions. So kin selection is like teamwork in nature's family, everyone working together to keep their shared treasures safe.
Richard Dawkins introduces the concept of memes as cultural replicators that function in a manner similar to genes in the biological world. Memes are units of cultural information, ranging from ideas, tunes and behaviours to fashion trends and scientific theories that spread from brain to brain through processes such as imitation, communication and social interaction. Just as genes compete for survival in the biological environment, memes compete in the cultural landscape, where their success is determined by their ability to capture attention, resonate with individuals and be transmitted effectively. Memes evolve and mutate over time, adapting to changing societal contexts and preferences, which allows them to persist or fade depending on their relevance and appeal. Dawkins' analogy highlights how human culture is not static but dynamic, driven by these replicating units of information that shape the way societies think, behave and develop. Through this framework, memes provide a compelling lens to understand the spread of trends, beliefs and innovations across generations. The selfish gene provides a compelling framework for understanding human behavior, interpreting actions ranging from selfishness to altruism as manifestations of genetic strategies aimed at survival and reproduction. Dawkins suggests that human behavior, though often perceived as guided by conscious choice and free will, is deeply rooted in the strategies of our genes, which prioritize their own replication and survival. Acts of kindness or sacrifice, while appearing altruistic, may serve hidden genetic purposes, such as ensuring the survival of close relatives who share similar genetic material. Similarly, behaviors often labeled as selfish may simply reflect strategies that maximize individual genetic success. This perspective challenges conventional views of morality and decision-making, revealing the intricate interplay between biology and behavior. The concept of memes has profound implications for understanding cultural evolution. Just as genes drive biological evolution, memes drive cultural change, influencing the way societies evolve. Memes shape our beliefs, values, and behaviors, acting as units of cultural information that spread, adapt, and transform over time. As memes replicate and evolve, they play a key role in shaping the trajectory of human culture, influencing everything from social norms to artistic expression. This process mirrors the way genetic evolution operates, but in the realm of ideas, practices, and societal structures. The Selfish Gene has undoubtedly been one of the most influential yet controversial books in the field of evolutionary biology. While Dawkins' gene-centered view of evolution has shaped much of modern evolutionary thought, it has also sparked significant criticism. Critics, particularly proponents of group selection, argue that focusing solely on the gene as the primary unit of selection oversimplifies the complexity of evolutionary processes and overlooks the role of groups or species. Despite this, the book's impact on evolutionary biology, psychology and even philosophy is undeniable. It challenged conventional thinking and opened new avenues for understanding human behavior, social structures and culture. Dawkins' ideas also resonated beyond biology, influencing fields such as psychology and philosophy, where concepts of individual versus collective interests continue to be debated. In response to the criticism, Dawkins refined and expanded upon his ideas in later works, such as The Extended Phenotype, where he addressed many of the critiques and broadened the scope of his original arguments.